Hey, what's up guys? I'm Lan here. Welcome back to a new video on my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about iOS 16.1.2 after using it for a few days on my iPhone 13. So this is an iPhone 13 and I've been using iOS 16.1.2 for a couple of days now. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the battery life and the performance and what are the bug fixes has happened and what are the bugs are still present and I experienced on this iPhone 13. So make sure you watch this video till the end. But before that, if you're new here and happen to enjoy this kind of videos on this channel do give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel now with that being said let's get right into the video all right guys so as you can see from the screenshot itself ios 16.1.2 came in about 335 mb i was not able to you know get the update size but you know i confirmed from others that it came in about between 350 to 400 mb on iphone 13. so if you're on ios 16 stable series of updates you should update your iphone to ios 16.1.2 so let me go to the settings and let me go to the general and about section if I go to the about section, as you can see, the iOS version says iOS 16.1.2 and the build number for this is 20B110. Now, if I look at the screenshot, it says that it improves the compatibility with wireless network providers. So many people are confused whether this update provides the 5G or not in India. But, you know, to avoid your confusion, if I go to the cellular and if I go to the cellular data options, voice and data, as you can see, still after updating to iOS 16.1.2 on iPhone 13, I have only the 4G and 3G option. So it is pretty much clear that this update does not give you the 5G capability. So for 5G, you have to wait till iOS 16.2 public release, which will be happening in next few weeks. So this update is, you know, not about the 5G, although this update, uh, you know, improves the compatibility between the, you know, existing wireless network providers. That means if you're using 4G or 3G, your experience should be improved, although this update does not contain any modem firmware so that's out of the way now let's quickly talk about the battery life since i've been using this on my iphone 13 for a couple of days so first let's talk about battery health as you can see this is an iphone i've been using it for uh, quite some time like six to seven months but still it's good that the battery health hasn't dropped it is at 100 percent and if i talk about the battery life as you can see for last 24 hours the screen on time is 2 hour 42 minutes and the screen off time is 1 hour 15 minutes and if I talk about last 10 days, the average screen on and screen off timer in front of you. And as you can see, these are the apps that has been used in the background and that consumed my iPhone battery. So I would say, you know, people were skeptical about whether they should update from iOS 16.1.1 to 1.2. Uh, that was a security update. I mean, I didn't notice that much of difference in terms of battery life or performance, battery life, whatever it was there with iOS 16.1.1. I experienced a similar battery with with the same kind of usage on my iPhone 13. To be honest, if I take an example, as you can see, uh, if I talk about this day, about that day, I used my iPhone till 95% and for that I have gotten a screen on time about 5 hour 42 minutes and the screen off time of 1 hour 26 minutes. So the screen on and the screen off time heavily depends on the iPhone usage. Many people complain that if I update to iOS 16, will the battery degrade or stuff like that. It is not like that. If you are happy with iOS 15.7, then stay in iOS 15.7. Otherwise, if you want to use the new lock skin customization or the new iOS 16 features, you can actually update. So battery life will heavily depend on iPhone usage. Yes, with a fewer updates, there are dependency on the battery life, but this update is not one of the, those updates which will degrade the battery life. Now let's talk about one more thing people were concerned about. If I go to the general and talk about the iPhone storage, people were, you know, this issue was there with iOS 15, but still, as you can see, it loaded quickly. And if I go down, as you can see, there are two sections, right? One is iOS and another is system data. For, so for this iPhone, the system data is consuming 10.89 GB. So people were consuming like, although they had free space, the iPhone storage and the iOS and system data storage representation was not right. So that's one of the things that I wanted to highlight. But for me, there was no such issues as you can see from here. Now talking about the performance, I mentioned this before on the initial video that, you know, the swipe lag, you know, once you open any application and if you swipe home, 
I mean swipe up or swipe home so that lag is still present and it happens almost you know five out of ten times right so it is not reliable once you update you know it works fine for a couple of hours and then once you are you know used to use all your application then you know it will be back to what it was so as you can see that stutter that glitch is still present i still feel that that ios 16 is not fully optimized like we are running on ios 16.1.2 and it's a stable version of ios 16 right but still apple needs to fix this kind of issues and it's not like i'm using some old iphone it's iphone 13 just a year old iphone but still the performance is not up to the mark now talking about the geekbench 5 after you know using this i have ran this Geekbench 5 this morning. Let me show you the scores again. As you can see, the single core score came in about 1740 and the multi core score came in about 4615. So these are the Geekbench 5 scores. Don't worry too much about the Geekbench 5 scores. What you see on the screen, I mean, I would say that after using the iOS 16.1.2 for few days, I don't see the performances up to the mark because if I go to the app library and sometimes there's lag that I can notice and always this issue used to bother me and it is still bothering me. I've given feedback on the beta software's feedback app, but Apple is yet to fix with iOS 16.2 this lag you know whenever I open any application and close it any application for that matter there's a lag that is associated most of the times I know many of you have faced this issue and have commented on the previous videos and even I am facing this issue no matter it's not you know if you're having iPhone 14 you'll not have this issue many iPhone 14 and 14 Pro users have commented the same so with the help of this video, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, how is the battery life and performance I am experiencing on this iPhone 13. And if you are on iOS 16.1.1, if you are skeptical whether you should update or should not update to iOS 16.1.2, I would say update to iOS 16.1.2, it will not affect your battery life. It's a security update. And also, if you are having any network issues, it might fix that with the improvement that Apple has mentioned on the release note. So that's it for this video hope you enjoyed this quick video give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel many more awesome videos just like this one are coming up on the channel now with that being said i will see you on my next video bye bye